Greetings of the day to all of you. <coughs> In today's lecture, we, uh, we are going to discuss a few advantages of phase angle regulator or phase angle control. I will write here advantages of phase angle control. Okay. Uh, with the help of a phase angle regulator or a phase angle controller, you can basically adjust or control the phase angle between the two buses and hence can control the flow of power over the transmission line. So one of the ad uh, prominent advantages of phase angle regulation or phase angle control is improvement in transient stability. We are going to discuss that. Transient stability improvement. Transient stability improvement. Now, <clears throat> how does phase angle control result in transient stability improvement? That will be clear with the help of graphs or power angle characteristics. This is the power angle characteristic for an uncompensated transmission system. So it's something like this. We have uh, drawn it on a number of occasions while discussing series compensation, shunt compensation, advantages of shunt compensation, advantages of series compensation. On a numerous occasions, we have drawn this power angle characteristic. Now, uh, the maximum power that the line is capable of uh, transmitting at delta equal to 90 degrees is V max equal to V square by X because the power equation is given by P equal to V square by X sine delta. You can call this figure as figure A and this figure A represents the power angle characteristic for uh, uncompensated transmission system or we can write uncompensated system. Fine. <coughs> Now let us again assume that the system is operating at steady state at a del uh, power angle or transmission angle delta 1 where uh, electrical power which is transmitted over the line, this is the line and this is our system, this is sending in voltage Vs, this is receiving in voltage Vr. This is the transmission line reactance Jx, current is I. The power transmitted over the line is Pe, which is equal to mechanical input provided by the turbine. So electrical output, which is the electrical power transferred or transmitted over the transmission line is exactly equal to mechanical input. That causes our system to operate at steady state at a transmission angle delta 1. Now let us assume a fault has occurred. Now, since uh, as soon as fault occurs, uh, say at delta equal to delta 1, the line gets stripped and no electrical power is trans transmitted over the line. For that case, PE is equal to 0, where PM, mechanical input, is still same, it's constant. So, since mechanical input is provided by the turbine, but electrical output of generator uh, or of the system is 0, it causes acceleration of the generator. So generator starts, the machine starts accelerating as a result of which there is accelerating kinetic energy and as a result of which the transmission angle increases. Let us assume transmission angle increases from say delta 1 to delta 2 at which point fault is cleared. As soon as machine accelerates, delta increases and it keeps on increasing, machine is accelerating and as soon as delta is equal to delta 2, fault is cleared. And once the fault is cleared, the machine is reconnected with the system and it starts transmitting the power. Now at delta equal to delta 2, how much power the machine is transmitting or trans, uh, how much power the line is transferring or transmitting? It is this much of power. Let's call this PE dash. Where this PE dash is greater than steady state power, PE. That means the electrical power which is transmitted over the line or is transferred is greater than mechanical input. So electrical output is greater than mechanical input that causes deceleration of the machine. 
the machine now starts decelerating as a result of which there is again decelerating kinetic energy and as the machine decelerates delta increases say from delta 2 to delta 3 now when delta increases it increases from delta 2 to delta 3 during the deceleration of the machine and finally these two areas should get balanced once the area a1 which represents the accelerating kinetic energy during the acceleration of the machine when this area is equal to a a2 which represents the decelerating kinetic energy uh, during the deceleration of the machine okay once these two areas are equal the system comes back to its normal operation steady state operation where electrical power transmitted or transferred over the line is exactly equal to mechanical input power and steady state operation again resumes so the system stays stable it, it is stable so therefore uh, from delta 1 to delta 2 line is tripped electrical output power is zero mechanical input is there machine accelerates area a1 represents the accelerating energy accelerating kinetic energy at delta equal to delta 2 fault is clear line is again connected in the system it transmits a higher power pe dash which is greater than mechanical input power and machine starts decelerating till area a2 which represents the decelerating energy or decelerating kinetic energy is exactly equal to area a1 so when a2 is equal to a1 steady state operation is restored and machine uh, and uh, uh, an amount of power pe which is equal to pm is again transmitted over the line okay now how much margin is left for stable operation of the system which is called the margin of stability this is the margin of stability let's call this a margin which is left there now you can very clearly see this margin of stability for an uncompensated transmission system is very small which means that if there is a delay in the clearance of fault, that means if fault is not cleared here, it is cleared somewhere here, then decelerating kinetic energy or area A2 will always be less than area A1 because only this much of area is available as margin of stability. If instead of clearance of fault here, fault is cleared very late, say somewhere here, the accelerating area will be much larger than the decelerating area which includes this area. And when decelerating area is less than accelerating area stable operation will never uh, you know return so the system will become unstable so therefore there is a very small margin of stability left that means if uh, this uh, clearance of fault is if it is delayed by a small angle the system will still be you know in the stable operation because some margin of stability is there but if clearance of fault is delayed by a larger angle larger time then margin of stability is not sufficient to keep the system stable in that case a2 will always be less than a1 and system will uh, you know become unstable so therefore the margin of stability is very small in case of uncompensated transmission system now let us assume now the system is compensated by phase angle regulator okay this is delta versus p for phase angle regulator you know uh, let me let us draw the redraw the graphs power angle characteristics this is again for you know uncompensated system for compensated system it is something like this this is the power angle characteristic and this is pi plus delta this is the power angle characteristic for uh, you know uh, uh, a compensated system a system compensated by phase angle controller or phase angle regulator with phase angle control and here equation for power is given by p is equal to v square by x sine of delta minus sigma oh i will write it here p is equal to v square by x sine of delta minus sigma where sigma is the phase angle of the phase angle controller or phase angle regulator so the phase angle this uh, gets modified from delta to delta minus sigma right as a result of this when you are controlling the phase angle with the help of phase angle controller you can make your power angle characteristic like this that means the maximum power which is transmitted over the line it almost remains independent of delta as delta increases it remains independent 
it has a it has it definitely has an advantage what is the advantage it will improve the transient stability of the system again we assume that the system is operating at steady state uh, you know there is steady state operation where the electrical power transferred over the line is equal to mechanical input power and the system is operating at a transmission angle delta 1 and again fault has occurred now fault has occurred we have a phase angle regulator now connected here it's connected in series now the system is compensated by phase angle regulator you know as soon as fault occurs here you know um, electrical output um, this line is tripped electrical output is more than electrical output is zero mechanical input is there machine accelerates let's assume it accelerates uh, up to this from delta 1 to delta 2 and a uh, let us call this delta s1 and delta s2 and a s1 is the area which represents the accelerating kinetic energy as soon as delta is equal to delta s2 fault is you know cleared line is connected back into the system but in presence of phase angle regulator this is angle our phase angle controller or phase angle regulator and it, it has already it adjusts the phase angle in such a way that your power angle characteristic is not given by this it is given by this curve okay now as soon as the line is connected back into the system it starts transmitting power again but how much power will it transfer it will <coughs> transfer a power pe dash which is greater than pe that means pe dash is greater than mechanical input power and machine will start decelerating and as the machine decelerates the machine decelerates and when delta is equal to delta s3 the decelerating area a2 exactly becomes equal to the accelerating area as1 this is as2 this is as1 so when as2 becomes equal to as1 as2 is equal to as1 that means decelerating kinetic energy is equal to accelerating kinetic energy area as2 is equal to area as1 the system comes back to its normal operation steady state operation so so far so good because this is same as this but what is the difference the difference is there here that for uncompensated system the margin of stability was very very small but for compensated system we can see this is the margin of stability uh, you know area above this line it's called margin of stability a huge area is still available and this is the margin of stability as margin now you can very clearly see that as margin is much much larger we can say that as margin that's the margin of stability with uh, compensated line a transmission line compensated by phase angle controller the margin of stability is very very great large much much greater than the margin of stability without compensation this is the margin of stability with compensation and this small area is the margin of stability without compensation so as margin is much much larger than a margin which means even if this fault is not cleared here it is cleared very very late say here or even here you still have a very large area available um, to ensure that as2 becomes equal to as1 and system still remains stable so therefore this phase angle control results in substantial improvement in the transient stability of the system so i can call this figure b figure b is for compensated system compensated system the system is compensated by phase angle controller or phase angle regulator par so with the phase angle control the power angle characteristic gets modified by as uh, because it is given by this equation by phase angle control and you have a very huge very large margin of stability as margin margin is much much larger than a margin and the system remains stable so therefore the transient stability is improved by phase angle control this is one advantage another advantage which i am going to discuss with you is power oscillation damping which is also provided by phase angle control power oscillation damping or electromechanical oscillation damping power oscillation damping okay this will be again clear with the help of certain graphs which we have already discussed in other classes this is time versus uh, transmission angle uh, initially the system is operating at steady state transmission angle 
delta naught and due to some disturbance the electrical power transmitted over the line is temporarily temporarily uh, temporarily decreased which makes mechanical input greater than electrical output temporarily and uh, the generator or the machine accelerates because of which delta increases and then delta starts decreasing but instead of settling at a steady state value delta naught since the system is undamped it further decreases then it re re uh, reaches some minimum and then it again starts increasing and then decreasing so the system is subjected to sustained oscillations so this is the oscillatory nature of delta so this is for undamped system the system is undamped because it is an uncompensated system no compensation is used so system is undamped a small disturbance is in the system causes acceleration of machine deceleration of machine then acceleration deceleration as a result of which that power angle or the transmission angle oscillates like this so the system is subjected to sustained oscillations and it's an unstable uh, type of operation it can be very clearly understood if we try to explain it with the help of power uh, transmitted with respect to time so initially power transmitted when a uh, system is operating at steady state operation delta is equal to delta naught power transmitted over the line is p naught right and let us assume a small disturbance has occurred in the system say a temporary fault which has resulted in power transmitted over the system to decrease temporarily since p naught has now decreased but mechanical input remains same the machine accelerates because of acceleration of the machine delta increases and d delta by dt is greater than zero. So when delta increases, that means p also increases because p is directly proportional to sine of delta. Okay. And then when delta decreases, p also decreases and it follows uh, this delta pattern. So therefore, this is um, undamped system again. The system is undamped. Now, how does a series uh, compensator sorry how does a phase angle controller uh, help in uh, you know uh, damping these oscillations and quickly damping these oscillations for that purpose we will draw the characteristics for phase angle regulator or phase angle controller now phase angle controller basically i have already told you we have studied in previous lectures uh, one of the earlier lectures that phase angle controller basically adjusts this angle delta and it adjusts the power angle uh, uh, it modifies the power, power equation uh, it's not v square by x sine delta it is given by v square by x sine of delta minus sigma where sigma is the phase angle of the you know uh, phase angle regulator as be, uh, and because of this phase angle which is adjusted by phase angle regulator your power equation gets modified as given by this equation now this delta can be negative it can be positive it has this range minus i mean the sigma minus sigma max is less than or equal to sigma less than or equal to plus sigma max that means the sigma can vary from maximum negative to maximum positive when i say that sigma is negative negative sigma means that our power angle characteristic is shifted uh, towards left shift towards left and when power angle characteristic is sh shifted towards left it increases delta and power transmitted over the line also increases on the other hand if delta, uh, sigma is positive that means if the phase angle adjusted by the phase angle controller is in the positive range then that means power angle characteristic which i am not drawing here that shifted towards the right Shifting of power angle characteristic towards the right means that power transmitted over the line decreases. Now, with this fundamental concept, with this theoretical background, we can now very easily understand the operation of the phase angle controller or phase angle regulator in damping the power oscillations. Right. Now, what is happening? Initially, our system is operating in a stable mode uh, at steady state operation the transmission angle is delta naught machine is running at a steady state speed at a transmission angle delta naught and 
the power which is transmitted over the transmission network is P0. Some fault has occurred on the transmission line which has caused maybe some temporary fault which has temporarily caused the power transmitted over the line to decrease. Say let us suppose it has decreased to P0 dash. Initially P0 was equal to Pm. That is the electrical power transmitted or transferred over the line was equal to mechanical input power and system was operating at delta equal to delta naught steady state operation no problem. A temporary fault or disturbance has occurred over the system and power has temporarily, tem temporarily dropped from P0 to P0 dash. P0 dash is less than P0 which means P0 dash is less than Pm. So temporarily for some period the electrical power transmitted over the line becomes less than mechanical input power which causes acceleration of the machine. So when machine accelerates that means delta increases that means d delta by dt becomes greater than zero and you know when machine accelerates delta increases and we don't want machine to accelerate because this acceleration causes oscillations in the machine. So in order to avoid acceleration of the machine what can we do? This acceleration basically has been because of the reason that electrical power transmitted over the line has temporarily become, become less than mechanical input power. If we can increase the electrical power transmitted over the line at this moment, at this difference or this gap between P0 dash and Pm, if we reduce, then the oscillation, the magnitude of oscillation can be reduced. So the, the magnitude of increase of, you know, acceleration or increase of delta can be reduced. Just few moments back I told you that this is possible now if you want if, if you don't want the uh, machine to accelerate much so that delta does not increase much the electrical power transfer transferred over the line has to be increased I, a few moments back I told you that that is possible if delta if this sigma is made negative because when you make sigma negative more power is transmitted over the line so therefore the sigma is made negative when sigma is made negative this is this means negative how much negative it depends upon ki kitna power aapko power transfer line pe badhana hai so when sigma is made negative this p0 dash increases so p, let us assume that this is p0 double dash which is greater than p0 dash so that p0 double dash nearly becomes equal to it may still be less than pm but it may very nearly be equal to Pm. The electrical power transmitted over the line increases and the acceleration of the machine is less. And when there is less acceleration, the delta increase will be less. There will be still increase in delta, but the amplitude of increase in delta will be less. Up to this. Because from this to this point, delta was increasing, d delta by dt was greater than zero. What we have done? We have uh, used phase angle controller which has made sigma, that's phase angle negative, by making phase angle negative, it has increased power from this small P0 dash to larger P0 double dash, so that more power is transmitted over the line and electrical output power is nearly equal to mechanical input power and the magnitude of acceleration is decreased and the increase in delta is still there but it is less than this. After this what happens? Delta starts decreasing because the system is oscillatory in nature. It's undamped system previously. Delta starts decreasing. When delta decreases, that means d delta by dt becomes less than zero. And the question is when does delta decrease? When does transmission angle decrease? The answer to this question is that delta will decrease when electrical output power is greater than mechanical input power that will cause delta decrease because machine is decelerating from this point to this point machine is accelerating and delta is increasing from this point to this point machine is decelerating and deceleration causes decrease in the delta so if you don't want this much of decrease in the delta if you don't want this, this much of deceleration in the machine then electrical output power now which was previously increased you have to decrease it because it is becoming greater than pm because of this oscillation now you have to decrease p0 so that this p0 nearly becomes equal to pm and deceleration is reduced how can we do this how, how can we do this this will be done by the phase angle controller by adjusting the phase angle so from this instant to this instant since delta is decreasing the phase angle will be adjusted by the phase angle controller to be positive so it makes phase angle sigma now positive 
So when sigma is positive, I already told you that power angle characteristics for sigma positive are shifted towards right and that decreases the transmitted power. The transmitted power for positive delta, positive sigma decreases. Okay, so when sigma is made positive by the phase angle controller, transmitted power decreases and when transmitted power decreases, decreases it becomes very nearly equal to mechanical input power or the machine ki deceleration kam ho jayegi and when machine decelerates but small amount to aapka delta bhi small amount se decrease hoga you can see this is the decrease in the this is the minimum value of del, delta uh, for undamped system and this is the minimum value of delta for damped system a system which is damped by compensation by phase angle control compensation uske baad fir se machine accelerates again and then this repeats for acceleration electrical power output has to be increased and sigma again becomes negative and then again you repeat this the phase angle controller operates in a bang bang manner adjusting sigma between negative and positive values like this you can see till it becomes zero so that means now magnitude of oscillation will be further reduced and it will be further reduced, it will be further reduced, it will be further reduced till oscillations are almost over. So these are the oscillations in delta which are because, which are because of uh, acceleration and deceleration of the machine for an undamped system, a system which is not compensated, which is uncompensated transmission system and these are you know acceleration and decelerations or oscillations in the system and hence oscillations in the delta for damped system, a system which is damped due to compensation by phase angle control and ultimately you can see this delta oscillations are damped completely after about one, two and three cycles and system again operates at normal value of transmission angle delta naught. So this is for damped system. How is damp damping provided? By phase angle controller. Same thing will happen with power. Power oscillation less, still less power oscillation, still less power oscillation. Or ultimately there will be no oscillations in the power and P is equal to P naught corresponding to delta equal to delta naught so this is for damped system so therefore this clearly shows that how phase angle regulator or how phase angle controller makes the system a damped system and it uh, damps the electromechanical oscillations very quickly within a few cycles without phase angle control, the oscillations are sustained, you can see, with phase angle control, the sigma, that's the phase angle uh, of the phase angle regulator is adjusted in a bang bang control way between sigma, minus sigma, plus sigma, minus sigma, plus sigma, as per the requirement, till all the oscillations in delta or in, or in power are damped when all power oscillations are damped or when all electromechanical oscillations are damped then the role of phase angle controller is over its output becomes zero so therefore this phase angle controller operates in a bang bang manner bang bang manner and it adjusts it adjusts the phase angle between minimum minimum and maximum values minus sigma plus sigma minus sigma plus sigma it's called bang bang control so this, these graphs, these pictures or these graphs very clearly show how a phase angle regulator or how a phase angle controller helps in quick and effective electromechanical oscillation damping. So these are some of the advantages of phase angle controller or phase angle regulator. So uh, that's all about uh, advantages of phase angle regulator or phase angle controller. Over last three, two lectures, and this is the third lecture, we have been discussing the advantages of various types of compensation techniques. Uh, and prior to that, we have discussed various types of compensation techniques like shunt compensation, series compensation, and compensation by phase angle control. And then we have studied the advantages of various types of compensation techniques like advantages of shunt compensation technique, advantages of series compensation technique, and we have learned that series and shunt compensation techniques uh, offer very uh, prominent advantages like they increase the power transfer capability of an existing transmission line or transmission system 
okay they um, um, you know provide the voltage support and hence improve the voltage stability of the system and uh, they increase the power transfer capability of the system uh, which I have already told you and uh, they improve the transient stability of the system and finally they help in uh, quick damping of electromechanical oscillations or power oscillations. And in today's lecture we have studied advantages of phase angle control, compensation by phase angle control and we have uh, taken two advantages in addition to increase, you know, adjusting the phase angle between the two buses and hence increasing the power uh, transmitted over the line. The other advantages are improvement in the transient stability. Just few moments back, uh, I have discussed with you how a phase angle regulator or phase angle control technique, uh, you know, improves the transient stability of the system and how it quickly results in effective uh, uh, damping of electromechanical oscillations. So that's all about uh, you know an overview of various uh, compensation techniques like shunt compensation technique, series compensation technique, compensation by phase angle control and their advantages. Now from now onwards we will now uh, try to actually study uh, various types of facts, controllers or facts devices with the help of which we can realize these compensators. A shunt compensator how it can be realized with the help of facts technology or facts devices. How can we realize a series compensator with the help of facts devices? And how can we realize phase angle controllers with the help of facts devices? That will be, those will be our topics of discussion from now onwards. So, uh, inshallah, in our next lecture, we will study thyristor controlled reactor. What uh, actually thyristor controlled reactor is a part of static wire compensator. We will actually start studying uh, the shunt compensators which are realized by facts devices. The first shunt compensator that we are going to discuss in some of the future classes is SVC, static wire compensator. If you remember, I have already given you some idea about SVC. SVC looks like this, it is something like this. Uh, <clears throat> this is a high voltage bus. This is uh, basically a transmission line with the help of step down injection transformer it is uh, we create a medium voltage bus at a lower voltage and then we have uh, various components of static wire compensator connected like this for example this is one part of this compensator static wire compensator another part is this And then we have a filter, we have a filter, in fact it may be a number of filters, then we have an inductor, a small inductor and small capacitor like this. These are various components of static wire compensator. Actually static wire compensators are also of different types, we will study those and this is one of the types, one of the classifications of static wire compensators. These are the various components of static wire compensators. This is called thyristor controlled reactor, TCR. This is called thyristor switched capacitor. This is a harmonic filter. This is harmonic filter. And then these are inductors and capacitors. Okay. Thyristor controlled reactor is one of, one of the very important components of your static wire compensator. Similarly, thyristor switched capacitor is another very important part of static wire compensator. Before we study various types of static wire compensators, SVCs, we have to first understand the operation, the, the structure, topology and operation of these very important components of SVC. That means first of all we have to study the structure and operation of thyristor controlled reactor, TCR, and then we have to study the structure and operation of thyristor switched capacitor, TSC. Inshallah in our next lecture, um, we will first try to understand the structure, the configuration and the operation of a single phase DCR and a three phase DCR, a thyristor controlled reactor. Why is it called thyristor controlled reactor? Because we have a reactor, we have a, an inductor of fixed value in series with uh, two anti-parallel connected SCRs or thyristors. These anti-parallel connected thyristors act as a bidirectional switch and by phase angle control or uh, you know 
uh, firing angle control or delay angle control, alpha control, we make this reactor a variable reactor. That's why it's called thyristor controlled reactor. By making this reactor a variable reactor, variable XL, variable inductive reactor, any amount of reactive power which is on the bus, which is on the transmission system, can be absorbed by this thyristor controlled reactor. See, uh, this thyristor, the SVC has TSC and TCR. TSC is thyristor switch capacitor. It basically generates reactive power and injects reactive power onto the transmission line or onto the bus. And thyristor controlled reactor absorbs the reactive power from the bus. Sometimes you may have to only inject the uh, reactive power, generate the reactive power with the help of this TSC and inject that uh, into the transmission network or onto the bus. And in some cases, you, you may have to, you know, uh, you may have to inject the reactive power onto the bus and a part of this reactive power you may have to absorb with the help of this thyristor controlled reactor TCR. Because the reactive power which is generated and injected into the bus may be more than what is required. So the excess reactive power is then absorbed by the thyristor controlled reactor TCR. So therefore TSC alone will not work. TSC along with TCR has to work. If the reactive power generated and injected by TSC is exactly equal to reactive power requirement of the load, then this TCR at that time is not operated. But generally what happens, the reactive power which is generated and injected by this TSC onto the network, it is sometimes it becomes more than what is required. So the excess reactive power is to be absorbed by this TCR. So therefore TCR and TSC, they work in tandem with each other. They work in combination, in uh, you know, they work in tandem with each other so that only a desired amount of reactive power is transmitted, uh, injected onto the bus for reactive power compensation. So the first very important component of SVC is TCR, thyristor controlled reactor. We will start studying about thyristor controlled reactor from next lecture. So with this I will end my today's lecture. I advise all of you to go through this lecture. Uh, I wish all the best to all of you. Thank you.